My name is Pastor Bruce Demetroff. Today, I'm going to read an old but familiar Christmas story to many of us. It is actually a parable. It is entitled, The Parable of the Birds. Before I read the parable, I would like to give you some background information regarding this Christmas story. And the source that I am using comes from www.celebratingholidays.com. Louis Cassells was born and raised in South Carolina. After graduating from Duke University in 1942, he joined the Air Force to serve World War II. Over the course of his three years in the Army, Castles worked as a communications officer and then a first lieutenant. Soon after, the war ended. He took a position as a correspondent with United Press International. He served in this capacity for 20 years before becoming senior editor in 1967, a position he held for the remainder of his life. Castles wrote The Parable of the Birds and distributed it through the United Press International in December of 1959. The story appeared in newspapers and on radio broadcasts across the country. It was so popular that it was, and continues to be, reproduced every Christmas. One of the most notable voices to introduce the story on the air was Paul Harvey, the master storyteller of the 20th century radio. In his parable, Castles addresses some of the significant reasons why God chose to come into the world as a man, to demonstrate his love for people, to show his intimate understanding of human life, and to personally deliver the message of salvation. Enjoy this moving story. Now this man, to whom I'm going to introduce you, was not a Scrooge. He was a kind, decent, mostly good man. He was generous to his family and upright in his dealings with other men. But he just didn't believe all that stuff about God becoming a man, which the churches proclaim at Christmas time. It just didn't make sense, and he was too honest to pretend otherwise. I'm truly sorry to distress you, he told his wife, but I'm not going with you to church this Christmas Eve. He said he'd feel like a hypocrite, and that he would much rather just stay at home. And so he stayed, and they went to the midnight service. Shortly after the family drove away in the car, snow began to fall. He went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and heavier. Then he went back to his fireside chair to read his newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a thudding sound, then another and another, sort of a thump or a thud. At first he thought someone must have been throwing snowballs against his living room window. But when he went to the front door to investigate, he found a flock of birds huddled miserably in the snow. They had been caught in the storm and, in a desperate search for shelter, had tried to fly through his large landscape window. Well, he couldn't let the poor creatures lie there and freeze. So he remembered the barn where his children stabled their pony. That would provide a warm shelter if he could direct the birds to it. Quickly, 
He put on a coat and galoshes, and then he trampled through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the doors wide and turned on a light, but the birds did not come in. He figured food would entice them. So he hurried back to the house, fetched breadcrumbs and sprinkled them on the snow. He made a trail to the brightly lit, wide open doorway of the stable. But to his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs and continued to flap around helplessly in the snow. He tried catching them. He tried shooing them into the barn by walking around them and waving his arms. Instead, they scattered in every direction except into the warm, lighted barn. And then he realized that they were afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I am a strange and terrifying creature. If only I could think of some way to let them know that they can trust me, that I'm not trying to hurt them, but to help them. But how? Any move he made tended to frighten and confuse them. They just would not follow. They would not be led or shoot because they feared him. If only I could be a bird, he thought to himself, and, ming and mingle with them and speak their language. Then I could tell them not to be afraid. Then I could show them the way to the safe, warm barn. But I would have to be one of them so they could see and hear and understand. And at that moment, the church bells began to ring. The sound reached his ears above the sounds of the wind. And as he stood there listening to the, to the bells pealing the glad tidings of Christmas, and he sank to his knees in the snow. Now I understand, he whispered. Now I see why you had to do it. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, we read, The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. On behalf of the congregation of Athens Baptist Church, may you and your family have a blessed Christmas and New Year. Stay safe and may God's peace be with you all. Amen.